friends today is Saturday October 17th and it is the 24-hour readathon for the A Touch of Whimsy book club that's run by Alexandra Roslin and Kaylin Abridged so that's what we're doing today the 24 hours technically runs from midnight to midnight however I had to work today so I needed proper sleep prior to work, but I don't have to work tomorrow. So I got up at eight this morning and I'm just gonna run until eight o'clock tomorrow morning. So I'll stay up tonight past midnight and get some reading done as well. Cause I'm already gonna miss the hours while I'm at work. So I didn't wanna also miss the time I had to sleep. 24 hour readathon. We're gonna vlog it with like a work and a grown up life stuff interlude. Cause I do have to go to the grocery and do grown up things, but Luckily, audiobooks are a thing. I know for sure I'll be reading City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab because it is the group book for the month. So I'm gonna read that today. I've already started that while I was getting ready this morning. Uh, I have it on audio. And I know I wanna read the graphic novel Mooncakes, which I have digital on Hoopla. And I figure that since it's a mid-grade readathon and I have all of these of the Creepover series and all of these of the Sarah Normal series, I'm just gonna read as many of these as possible for the rest of the day. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna get to all of them. This is a lot of books, but there's a Connect Four board. So I'm, the Sarah Normals I have to read in order, but the Creepovers I can pick and choose what I read. So if I wanna pick something that sit, hits specifically with a square on the Connect Four board, then I can do that. These have to be read in order, but I know there's one that's to read or watch a movie with a ghost in it, so. Definitely got that covered with Sarah Normal. Also with City of Ghosts, but, you know, for sure. I know we'll be watching Hocus Pocus later this evening. I know that at some point I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to make for dinner. At some point there'll be some puppy footage, I'm sure. Unfortunately for me, it is time for me to leave for work, so yay! As we continue this theme of places you've never been before, in my vlogs. Welcome to my car. Work is over. I've finished City of Ghosts and have started Tunnel of Bones. It's really hard not to say City of Bones when I'm naming those two books. So I finished City of Ghosts. I've started Tunnel of Bones. I'm almost done. I have like an hour left of the audiobook. And I've got some grocery shopping to do, so I imagine that I'll be done with Tunnel of Bones before I get home. That's the goal. But first, grocery stores. Like four of them. I have returned to my home, as you can probably tell from the background, as you are all pretty used to it by this point. Though to be fair, it's pretty dark because my lights won't come on, which is kind of annoying. I don't know why the universe hates me the way it does, but... You know, I've got these lights all over the room. These are the newest set. They won't come on. They're just, they're just mocking me. Which is fine, I guess, but also annoying. Continuing on with the last update, I did finish City of Ghosts. I did finish Tunnel of Bones because I still had some driving to do around town. I also had downloaded uh, The Witch of Willow Hall by Hester Fox. That sounds right. If it's not right, I will correct myself. I'm about 30 minutes into the audiobook for The Witch of Willow Hall and I like the story so far, but it is so slow. Like not the story itself, but the narrator is so slow and I have it on audiobook from Hoopla so the fastest you can go is two times speed and that's just not working for me. It's real slow. It's like 1.5 maybe on something else or maybe even 1.0 on something else. Like it's real slow. In case you missed it, it's real slow. It is available from my library so I went ahead and put in a hold for it. Um, which I should see probably within the next couple of days and once that comes in I will start doing that again because from the library I can do three times speed Yeah, because I just it's I can't I can't I can't do it Can't can't do it. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull out my reading planner and I'm gonna go ahead and go to 
the Connect Four page that I have for the readathon, and I'm going to mark off all of the things that we have accomplished thus far so that I can see what else we need to do. And a lot of these are not uh, reading related, so probably haven't done them yet, but there are some things that we can definitely get to. Let's do that, and then I'm going to pick my next book. Okay, let's see. What can we cross off from here? We read a mid-grade. We... Have we done any of this yet? We read a scary book. We read City of Ghosts. I have watched and read a ghost story. Read a host's favorite. Because I know City of Ghosts was... One of the host's favorites, maybe Kaylin's. So that was a ghost, or a ghost, yeah, it's a ghost's favorite for sure. Uh, a host's favorite. I think it's going to be hard to get this thing done. Oh wait, oh wait, I see a thing that we can do. I got this. You ready? Caramel pumpkin swirl. So now what we should do is make a cozy drink. But we'll save that for later when we need caffeine. We're getting somewhere, kids. We're getting somewhere. I'm going to try and seasoning the dressing packet, probably some garlic in it as well. So I'm trying to decide if I want to add more garlic, but I got a fresh garlic layer. I really feel like I needed it. It just ran full of the garlic. So here comes the ranch. Oops. And one cup of water. Hang on. Instructions, it says to reserve a quarter cup of liquid at this jar, but then it didn't say what, so I'm not going to do that. So instead of starting a new book, I decided to have dinner first instead. And I went through trying to decide which book I wanted to read. There are a couple of the creepover books that I could probably work into reading a book with a witch in it, but instead, I'm going to read the graphic novel Mooncakes appears to have a witch and possibly a were of some sort, probably a werewolf because it's a kid's book. I doubt they get into other were animals um, in kids books, but I think it's a mid-grade. I could absolutely be wrong. I do think it's a mid-grade. That's the dog moving the tripod because he's a jerk. But yeah, so I'm gonna read that now. And then probably once we're done with this, it's probably gonna be dark enough to turn the lights off and watch Hocus Pocus. Okay, so I finished Mooncakes. It was awesome. Um, I had to switch to glasses because my contacts were so dang dry and I have no idea why. So I said in the clip previously that I thought Mooncakes was mid-grade. Um, it just used the word asshole. It is technically a rated teen. Um, so like 13, I mean most 13 year olds have heard the word asshole. So... I guess it would depend on depend on the kid to whether it was mid-grade or not because it really just I, I think it's just the one time they say that one of the characters is an asshole but it's great for representation like the main character is hard of hearing and there is a gender neutral character that uses they them pronouns there are um the the grandmas are the girls' grandmas are a couple, like they're, so, it, I mean, it doesn't expressly state what their sexual orientation is, which does that matter? I don't think so. You know, two ladies in a relationship. So yeah, there's some, some, it's definitely very inclusive. So I liked that. It's interesting to talk about like the differences in how the main character can struggle with her magics because of her being hard of hearing and wearing hearing aids. Um, and there's even a little bit at the end uh, after the book. A lot of times, if you're not familiar with comic books, a lot of times the ends will have um, like original artwork or like just bits and pieces of the way that they were coming up with the story. And this one has like a letter from one of the nanas to um, a specialist which in their field about the way that hearing aids can affect um, a witch's magic and basically talking about how they, you know, want to help their granddaughter um, be able to 
use her magic and wear her hearing aids as well. Um, and this, you know, happened when she was younger, when she was fitted for hearing aids originally. I love reading the little snippets at the end of graphic novels um, and just getting like all of the extra information. Uh, I did really enjoy it. I haven't done any ratings yet. I'll probably do that at the end when I do a wrap up. Um, so that's two books and a graphic novel down and I get to mark off another square and then I think I'm gonna get a snack and go to the living room and watch Hocus Pocus. I could watch it in my office but I think I want to watch it on the big screen. It's time for Hocus Pocus. I have popcorn. I've already shared with the pupper dogs. Pupper dog. And uh, I'm on the couch so I can be super comfy. The bird is here to make all of her noise. Oh look, more pepper dogs. And giant TV. Turn the light out. Boom. Lights out. Let's do it. Okay. I just want to take a minute to appreciate the adult humor of this movie and like how much of it I did not catch as a child, which obviously I've seen it since then. So like I've, I've seen things since I watched it when I was little, but like as an adult, a, the bus driver, pure genius, the we're looking for children. And he says, it may take me a few tries, but shouldn't be a problem. Like, first off, this is a Disney film y'all. A Disney film. Second off, like, I just, it's so great, like, as an adult watching this movie and getting the adult humor is so freaking glorious and I love it. Unrelated, but also noteworthy, <laughs> they come back from the dead and they don't know what a road is. Like they don't know what a road is, but somehow Mary's giving Winifred bunny ears on stage, like bunny ears on stage. And Winifred knows all of the words, do I put a spell on you? Like as a kid, it does not register in your brain, but as a grown up, like, how did they know to go back behind the microphones to sing into them to magnify their voices? And why is she giving Winifred bunny ears? What is, how does she, where did she learn this from? Where did she learn this? Where did that come from? And how does she know all the words Joy put a spell on you? It's just very peculiar. Also, the cats are watching as well. So there's that. Movie's over, but there's two important things that you need to see. A kitty cat sleeping over here. And a kitty cat sleeping over here. How does one get so lucky to have two cats and neither one of them are sleeping on my lap? Which means I, I can get up and go get a book and keep reading because there's no cat on my lap. Like they just laid elsewhere. How often does that happen? So I think now it's time for coffee because it's 11 p.m. I should not be tired right now, but I totally am because this is my normal bedtime. So first a snack for the bird and then coffee and then more books. It's actually gonna end up being snack time for everybody because you can't just get a snack for the bird. It doesn't work that way in this house. You have to get snacks for Fitz and snacks for Marilyn. They go back here on her little shelf. And then, you turn around and are greeted by this. Do you guys want a snack? Mommy first. And then Sissy, and then the Bobby. 
just a good boy. Can I get out now? I'm trapped. Can I, can I get out now? Thank you. That's it, just one this time. So for my coffee, I'm gonna add some Premier Protein. This is the caramel flavor. Some people use the whole thing. I just use like a third and use it kind of like as a creamer and a sweetener because I can't drink the whole thing because it'll give me a headache because of the artificial sugar. Well, I tried to mark off stuff with you, but then I realized I wasn't filming because I'm a loser. Not really great at this vlogging thing, obviously, but we made a cozy drink. We read a fall graphic novel. We watched Hocus Pocus. We watched a spooky movie and we read a book with witches in it. So we've done quite a lot here. I can't decide if I want to do the creepover books or if I want to do a Sarah Normal. I'm not sure. I can't decide what I want to do. So I might flip a coin or do something crazy. I, don't know. I guess now is as good of a time as any to kind of show you guys my reading notebook slash planner. October's been kind of weird because I'm trying to read a book a day. Pretty much what I do is I'll start, I, I try to keep the book that I'm reading, like actually keep track of what I'm reading that day. So like this day, I was reading both the Sleepwalker Tonic and the Lost Lullaby because I finished one and then started the next one. Then at the end of the week, I kind of mark off all of the books that I've read that week and then write in my actual star rating. But like this week, the only book that I've read so far this week, I finished on the 14th and that was Stalking Jack the Ripper, which I've already read before. And so it was a reread for me. And then everything else I've read today, and I haven't been keeping notes because I read them all one after the other, not really keeping notes. So on a week like this, what I'll do is I'll start on Monday just so that I, you know, I'm not wasting the days, but I'll start at Monday and make notes about the books that I've been reading. And then I'll do my review down here with my little, my rating scale. So that's what I'm gonna do now um, while I, I'll probably watch a couple YouTube videos and go through this and then I will get back to reading. So this is what it looks like filled out for this month, this week rather, this month, I've lost my mind. Um, I went ahead and decided that since I've already read three books today and I'm probably gonna read at least one more, I finished Stalking Jack the Ripper on Tuesday, so that's accurate, but these three were all finished today but I wanted to leave space for the next one that I'm gonna read today so I just filled the spots of the ones that I didn't finish what was I reading the rest of the week if I finished Stalking Jack the Ripper I had to have read another book this week you know what I did read another book this week that I did not write in here that's my bad I also read There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins um, I read that this week so I'll put it up here on Monday I just let the doggos out for their final potty break before bed. And I decided that since I'm sleepy, I'm going to go for the shortest book that I had out of the mid grades. And that is Is She For Real? Which is actually the next book in the Creepover series. So that's kind of weird, but it's like 130 pages. I should be able to read this in like an hour or so. Um, so I'm just gonna take this one to bed with me, um, which is probably the ultimate mistake. But I'm going to take this one to bed with me and try to finish it in bed. Also, I have new glasses, if you guys didn't know. They're blue. My old ones are tortoise shell. These ones are blue. I preemptively actually wrote, um, is she for real on here? Uh, this is my monthly view where I write in when I finish a book. Hilariously this month, everything has been finished on this side. Nothing over here. If you're wanting to know how my 31 days of books is going, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13. Once I finish Is She For Real, I'll be at 13 for 17 days. So I'm really not doing normal. Though most of them do not count as coming off of my TBR because I don't actually own physical copies of most of them, but it's, it's totally fine. Speaking of Merlin drooling on things, my desk is a fucking hot mess, but Merlin, this is where she lives. She sleeps on top of the laptop because it's warm there. Say hi to your friends. You say hi to all your fans. No? Cool. I said I was going to do reading sprints to read this book, which is obviously not going to happen because I 
am in bed. Twix is also here. Now she's leaving. Twix is the only one out tonight. The kids are in their room, which is normal. Because if you care, which you probably don't, Flash and Sky get put up at night and Twix and Ruby are allowed to stay out. Mostly just because we've had Flash since he was born, as he is Twix's baby. And we got Sky when he was like three months old and she was three months old so they were always put up at night and it's just their normal thing like if you even if you leave them out at night they'll go into their room and lay down with the door open so we just go ahead and put them in there at night and close the door because that's where they feel comfortable ruby who is our elderly lady she is 16. You haven't seen her today because she's next door at Nana's house living the, her best life. She likes to spend the night with Nana a lot. Um, she likes to spend her days with Nana a lot, especially when Nana's out working in the gardens. She'll walk around from garden to garden with Nana in the yard and she'll go to Nana's house and sleep on the floor next to her bed a lot. Um, if not, she's usually right there. That's her bed. She always sleeps with me or Nana and she just kind of gets to go between houses and do whatever she wants because she's old and we let her make the rules and Twixie just sometimes she'll sleep in here with me sometimes she'll sleep in the other room sometimes she'll sleep in the room with the kids it's just she does whatever she wants and then Merlin hi Merlin Merlin and Fitz will sleep in here with me sometimes Fitz will sleep in here with me usually he sleeps on the couch but Merlin almost always sleeps in here with me oh somebody's back Plus she heard me talking to the kitty cat and now she's jealous. That was a close up. Lay down be a good kitty. I just took my anxiety medication with the last drink of my coffee. Like my fully caffeinated coffee. And then came to bed. Took my anxiety medication with the last drink of coffee. And came to bed. So... That's where my life's at right now. All right, y'all, it is the following morning. It's time for a wrap up. Let's do it. I did fall asleep prior to finishing Is She For Real, but I gave myself from eight o'clock to eight o'clock. That was my 24 hours. And I woke up at like six, so I finished the book. And then I went back to bed. <laughs> but I finished it in my 24 hours, so counting it, despite the fact that I had slept a little bit in there. The books that I was able to finish were City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones, both by Victoria Schwab. Mooncakes by Suzanne and Wendy. That sounds right. And then Is She For Real, which is part of the Creepover series by PJ Knight, which is a pseudonym of multiple authors. So that was four books in 24 hours, plus I went to work and went to the grocery and watched Hocus Pocus and had a pretty good day overall really. It was a really great Saturday. I'm I'm happy that I did the readathon. I've got a lot that I need to do today that I didn't get done yesterday but it was a really fun day and I'm glad that I was able to get everything in. So let's talk about the books that we read. So both City of Ghosts and Tunnel of Bones I ended up giving 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really liked them both. I think Cassidy is a super fun character and Jacob is a great character as well. If you don't know what the series is about, that would be helpful. Um, Cassidy is a 12 year old girl who can see mainly Jacob who is a ghost but also other ghosts as well. She can cross into the veil and kind of see them in their world and learn how they died and she is excited because for the summer her and her family are going to their summer home where no one has died there so there's no ghosts and she can just be free from everything. Unfortunately her parents who are kind of like a ghost history spooky writers uh, their book gets picked up to be made into a TV show kind of like a documentary and because they're going to start filming they end up having to go to Europe and going to some of the world's scariest places. Their first stop is in Edinburgh, Scotland and they go to the City of Ghosts, which is why it's called City of Ghosts. So rather than getting her summer of ghost free, she gets a summer of ghost extreme. And it just kind of follows her and Jacob trying to um, discover kind of what this creepy ghost is after, maybe what Cassidy's entire purpose is, and also how to defeat 
a creepy ghost and finding out if there are perhaps other people like Cassidy in the world. I really love the atmosphere of these books. They are perfect to read during spooky times. Um, the book series I guess does take place during summer break but it's in a cooler climate than what we have where I live and so it kind of does put in like the spooky vibe. Also there's a lot of cemeteries and ghost stories and that's kind of a fun part too is like you get several ghost stories within the ghost story and I like that aspect of it. I like getting to hear um, like local legends whether they're accurate or made up for the book either way. Um, just getting like <sighs> getting to talk about how legends kind of spread and how people pass down stories through generations and how things can be changed and manipulated and lost in translation of um, kind of like, you know, that game of telephone that you used to play in elementary school, kind of learning how things change from one person to another. And I like that aspect of the book. I think it's a really great mid-grade. As an adult reader, like I can see why some people wouldn't love it maybe as much as some of Schwab's other works because it is kind of short. So there's a little bit of plot lacking there but it's a mid-grade and I think for a mid-grade they're very well done and that's why I rated them so high whereas if I was b basing my rating off of a YA it probably wouldn't have been quite as high it probably would have been closer to a 4 instead of a 4.5 uh, but I still really enjoyed it and I think that my nieces will love it as well and I th I think that is one reason why I'm able to look at mid-grades I think people who are around children in that age bracket are better at judging mid-grades whether you're in that age bracket or you are around children who are in that age bracket are better at judging mid-grades because I think if you are just looking at it from the mindset of a 33 year old woman it's like yeah okay but looking at it from the mindset of would my nieces enjoy this? Would this be something that they would like? Would it be something that would entertain them? And would they like it more than what I would as a 33 year old woman? And I definitely think they would. I think this is something that would be really great for them. Um, I don't want to go too far into the plot of the second book because it is the second book, um, which will then, you know, bleed over into learning spoilers about the first book. But basically, the second book takes place in Paris. And there's more things about Cassidy's past that she's learning and more things about other pasts that they're learning. And it again has that creepy feel. It has the I'm like obsessed with France now that I have been watching the Chateau Diaries uh, on YouTube. And so like I'm obsessed with France now anyway. Um, <laughs> but just them going to France and um, just all of the little ins and outs of seeing them go into like the catacombs which is why it's called Tunnel of Bones because they're in the catacombs and it's just a really really fun couple of books and I'm super excited to read the next book in the series and I loved these so much that I I didn't love A Darker Shade of Magic um which is the only other Schwab book that I have read but reading these two and loving these two so much I want to go back and reread read that. I think maybe I have my mind wrapped around why I didn't like it as much the first time and I want to go back and reread. I didn't hate it but I didn't like love it as much as some people did. So I definitely want to go back and reread that. Um, now that I have read from Schwab and I know that like I really enjoyed her writing, I want to go back and read um, A Darker Shade of Magic and then continue on with the series. Um, definitely something that's on my list for the future. Okay, next book. Um, I read Mooncakes, which again, I believe is by Suzanne and Wendy. I don't remember their last names, but I will, it, it's right here, so you can see it, right? This book is great representation wise. You have two main characters who are adults. I thought originally that maybe this book was a mid grade as well. It is not. Not because I think it's like overtly not mid grade. There's the use of the word asshole one time. I don't think there's any other curse words like my nieces could handle it because they're like 13, 14, 15. They could read it and be fine. Um, but I think it just is going to depend on you and the child that you would be purchasing it for. There's two main characters and one of them is gender non-binary and they use they them pronouns. The other main character, her, she has two nanas who are in a relationship. There's a lot of not stereotypically normal gender identities and relationships, if that makes sense. I don't know how to word it correctly today. My brain, it's, it's, I didn't get enough sleep, so I can't figure out like how to word what I want to say. But basically, it's got a lot of non-straight cisgendered rep. 
okay let's let's go with that it was very whimsy i like the artwork was really well done very easily readable it is two things that i judge my graphic novels off of that I don't necessarily judge everything else off of is artwork and readability because sometimes I get confused on what sometimes it's confusing they just throw too many blocks in and it gets weird but this I think was done really well um I guess I should mention that I gave it a four out of five stars I think there was some plot that could have been better now for a graphic novel the plot was good but I think it could have been a little better the two main characters one is a werewolf one is a witch and they are trying to fight off this demon that the werewolf has been following for a while. They used to be friends when they were smaller. Um, and then the werewolf moved away when her mom and dad got divorced and remarried. And they haven't seen each other for a long time. The main witch character is also hard of hearing and she wears hearing aids. The story basically just revolves around them trying to figure out how to get rid of this demon thing and I really enjoyed it. I, like I said, I thought it was very whimsy. I thought the magic was really cute. I thought it was really well done. Um, there's some really great parts in it about um, just how the hearing impairment can affect the magic. I talked about that when we talked about this before. I really liked it. Okay, and then the last book that I read is also the only one I own, and that is Is She For Real by PJ Knight. This is part of the Creepover series. I gave this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. Um, it was pretty mediocre as far as the creepover series goes some of them are better than others this one is a five on the creepo meter i don't know that i agree with that but also it's for 12 year olds and i'm 33 if i was 12 i would probably think it was creepier than what i do as a 33 year old woman but that is not here nor there uh this book i think looking at it from the outside perspective is that i should not have read the synopsis because the synopsis basically tells you the entire plot line of the book like literally the only thing you don't know is the outcome you know the entire plot that's it. The end is creepy, but like the epilogue is kind of unbelievable, which I think is kind of the point. Some of these, I think this is the ninth book. Okay, it's book seven and I've read one from later on. So this is the eighth one that I've read. And I would say that more of them have ended with a plausible like human reason for why the creepy thing was happening. And very few of them have had a non-human reason why things are happening. And this is one of those. And so, I mean, we think. You don't really know because you don't really find out what the ending is. But I feel like, I don't know, it just, it was really predictable. And I think even for a 12 year old, it would be predictable. It was okay. It definitely like give you spooky vibes and creepy feelings. And I think as always, like the writing is well done. It's very clean. And I think it's very readable for a 12 year old. I just didn't love it as much as I have. Some of the other Creepover books have been great. Some have been real bad. This was just kind of middle of the road. I think um, for, you know, the mid grade for the target that it's for, I think it would be fine. I don't think it would be their favorite book, but it wouldn't, they wouldn't hate it. So. So those are the four books that I read during the readathon. I didn't end up getting Connect Four twice on my Connect Four board. So pretty happy about that. I was able to read four more books. If you've been following along, I've been doing a 31 books in 31 days for October. Uh, today is the 18th. Yeah, today's the 18th and I've read 13 books. Out of the 13, only I think five of them are books that I actually already own and are coming off of my TBR, but that's neither here nor there. I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm behind schedule. Like, I know I haven't read as many books as there have been days, but I am off work the final week of October and I will be vlogging that week as well because I'm going to be reading Obviously, I'm going to be doing like a reorganization for my bookshelves because they are a hot freaking mess. And I will also be catching up on any of my Preptober plans that I'm not caught up on. So it's going to be a very like reading and writing heavy vlog week. But I, I'm not great at the vlogging, but I'm trying to get better. And I figured like I'm off work for the week. So that would be a good time to try to figure it out. And like last weekend for the write-a-thon and then this week for this read-a-thon, I thought would be good like test to see how I'm doing. It's not horrible. It's not great. Let me know in the comments below um, if there's things that you liked about the vlogs, if there's things you didn't like, if there are things you think I could do better, if there's things you would like to see included, things you'd like to see more of, things you'd like to see less of. I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments below all of that because I mean I like doing these. They're fun but it's not fun if it's like stuff that you don't like. So like I want to also I want to do something that I enjoy but also something that you will enjoy to watch if that makes sense. That's going to be it for me today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and bonus videos on the weekends. 
If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!